The reason we like strength over everything else is because strength is how we interact with the world literally second by second, moment by moment. It has to do with everything we do. So how we interact with the world around us is strength. Like strength is force production. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am Scott Hambrick. Drinking the coffee over there is Matt Reynolds, and this is part one of a new series that we've been needing to do for a long time. Uh, the series is called Getting Started, and this is going to be a series of podcasts that someone who wants to get started with being uh, more fit uh, would, would need to listen to. So we're going to yeah. give you give you guys just the beats and the important pieces that you need to know before you go take on uh, a new fitness regime. We've got some episodes from earlier in our show that where we talk about some of these issues, but we thought, you know, Let's clean this stuff up. Let's do a better job. Let's make it nice for the people. Well, this was really our very first episodes that we ever did on this podcast. So you're talking about two and a half years ago, right? It's been a long time. Yeah, I mean, sound your, wasn't, your improv sound wasn't skills have gotten so much better since no, then. No, that's the, it's, it's essentially the only thing that hasn't gotten better is my improv skills. Sounds better, better, better producer. I, I, I dropped a joke on the David Pewter episode about dating the other day. And you just stomped it like grapes. <laughs> Did I? Oh, God. I got three emails. They're like, what's Riddles doing? And I'm like, I love him. He can't help it. I must not hurt it. <laughs> or maybe I just don't have any humor. Is that what it is? <laughs> Could be. It's all right, man. I get it. Remember, I'm the kid. I was a little kid. Never played with toys. I just really wanted to watch the, you know, like the ag, like ag day early in the morning, 430 in the morning. I'd get up. I'd be, I'd be six years old. Watching Ag Day, watching you know U.S. News and World Report, just you know whatever. How much are feeder steers going for now? I don't know anymore. But uh, back then, I could have told you in 1984. But this show is what's the big deal about strength? Yeah, because I'll just lay a little of the groundwork, and then you can go put your Reynolds stink on it. Like if we decide we want to get more fit, we could do anything. We could start taking long walks. Sure. We could swim. We could go to the gym and pick exercises from any of the hundreds of possible exercises on these different machines. We could get a BOSU ball and bounce around. We could take up uh, pole dancing. Maybe you should. We could. Uh, but, but, you know, we, we care about our time, we care about our effort, and we want to get results. So what would you have people do and why, Uncle Matt? Well, I'd have them do strength. And so why? I think when somebody – wants to wants to start a fitness journey there's often a sort of sort of a, a thing that has occurred emotionally to put them there right so we're often getting ready to start this fitness journey it's often because something negative has happened in their life and so you know whether that's a, a breakup or a divorce or a health scare or you know you lost a parent some sort of tragedy maybe you lost a job like what whatever those things are they're not not always super negative but they often come from a sort of negative place to go like, man, I got to clean myself up. I got to get my life right. And fitness is kind of part of that thing for a lot of people, but they often have no idea where to start. They don't, they don't even know what that means. My moment was when I leaned over to tie my shoes to leave the house and go to work. And I was like huffing and puffing like Homer Simpson. I'm like, this yeah, got to stop like out of breath. Just yeah. tying your shoes. Yeah. yeah. The sweating. Like, That's not okay. Right. Or, you know, or you put on, you know, I hear stories of, of ladies putting on a dress or men putting on a suit that they spend a bunch of money for that they've always fit into well and it fit great and all of a sudden they put it on they're like I can't even wear this. Like this is not a it's not a good place. And so and so they know they need to get fit. They just don't really even know what that means. They, what they what they mean is I want to look better, I want to feel better. But I'm not exactly sure how to accomplish that. And and you're right that there are a lot of ways that they can for in a short period of time they can certainly feel better and look a little better. There, there's almost an infinite number of fitness things you could do. If you went and did hot yoga, you would feel a little better, and in a, in two weeks, you might look a tiny bit better, right? You could go ride a bike. You could go do CrossFit. You could lift weights. You could go play in men's basketball league and screw up your knees. Do whatever those things are, right? But 
the reason we like strength over everything else is because strength is how we interact with the world literally second by second, moment by moment. It has to do with everything we do. I mean, literally everything. So how we interact with the world around us is strength. Like strength is force production. It's how we walk correctly. It's how we sit on a toilet. It's how we get in and out of our car. It's how we pick up our kids. It's mowing the lawn. It's that, it's that quality of life thing. And if we improve strength or if we improve force production, our ability to produce more force, which we'll dig into deeper, all of the other things that we want to accomplish physically will get some better. Strength is the only thing that improves all of those things, right? So I know if I go to yoga, there's nothing wrong with going to yoga. Yoga is not going to give me the biggest bang for my buck because what yoga is going to do is I'm going to get hot and sweaty and potentially somewhat more flexible, but I'm not going to get more strong. And, and people mistake this. They think that someone who's very good at yoga, they'll say, oh, oh, you know, you've got to meet my friend. They're really strong. They're, they're an international level yogi. No, <laughs> they're not strong. They're just real flexible, right? Um, and, and, or whatever it is, or like, Hey, I'm going to, a lot of people, what will often happen is a lot of people start running around their neighborhood. They don't know what else to do. I'm going to walk around my neighborhood or jog around my neighborhood because you just think that's what you need to do. Now, here's what happens. Here's the crazy thing about the jogging around the neighborhood. They jog around the neighborhood and they do it. Let's, let's say, oh, I'm going to go around the, the block or go around the block a couple times. And they do it a little bit more and a little bit more. And then two weeks later, after they've run every morning before work, they actually feel quite a bit better. And you know what? They've lost like seven pounds. And they're like, this is it. This is the answer. And then for the next three months, they run every single morning before work. And they're still down just seven pounds. And they don't feel any better than they did two weeks in. <laughs> so the question is, why? Yeah. Why does that stop working? Well, it's... Well, we can talk about that. It's not as scalable as the barbell is. And one of the most interesting things to me about that is when they go do that, they're, they're, they might get a little bit faster. They might be able to run a little bit farther, but they're not any stronger. That's right. Certainly and they're not, not more for flexible. A few days. Right. And they're not more explosive. And most of the athletic attributes that we would want to train don't get better. Just a couple. Maybe That's speed. Right and maybe endurance. Sure. Yeah, and this is the same for all of those physical abilities. You can take any of those physical abilities and you can say, well, uh, you know, I want to be more powerful. Okay, I'm going to jump. I'm going to do some jump workouts. And you might theoretically get a little better at jumping and a little bit more powerful, but you're not really going to get any stronger after the first few workouts, and you're not going to get really in better cardiovascular shape, and you're not going to really get any more mobile, and you're not really going to have any better balance. You're just... so so. It's a one-way street. Strength makes everything better. So if I, if I instead take the same person and I put them on a very simple but very hard strength program where they're doing the basic lifts, and we'll talk about the basic lifts and why, they make, why these lifts are the biggest bang for our buck, but they, just, they lift free weights a few times per week, two, three hours a week in total work. They are not only tremendously stronger a month later they are also they have better body composition they have almost always more muscle less fat which even if they don't even lose any fat and all they do is gain muscle their body composition got better their body fat percentage went down right if they are moving through a full range of motion on the strength lifts they their mobility gets better their flexibility gets better their balance is better right they're all of those things are better. And oh, by the way, their power went up too, right? And their speed went up because their legs are stronger. And so they have the ability to produce force faster because the force actually went up. And so the reason that we strength train over everything else, and it's not, it's not that we never do anything else, it's that we do strength first, is because it gives us the biggest bang for our buck. It makes all of those things better in the shortest amount of time. And it also can continue to improve long term. So when that running around the block, you're like, man, that worked really well. The first two weeks or first month I was running around the block. Why am I not getting better now? And we've all seen the guy that gets up every morning. He runs around the neighborhood or whatever, and he's skinny fat. And he's been, and he's been doing it for three years. He looks no different than he did three years ago. And let's all be honest about it. He looks awful. 
Yeah, he doesn't look good. Nobody looks at him and says, that's the way I want to look. The walking dead, man. They look terrible. But that guy probably looked really bad before he started, started running, and felt better and felt healthier two weeks in, four weeks in, six weeks in, and thought, this is the answer to my problem. And then it wasn't. And, and it's hard to convince that because he knows he can go back and go, but I remember when I started and I started running, like I, I felt better. I felt like my heart was better. I felt like my metabolism was better. I lost a little weight. Like, well, why isn't it still working? It's like, maybe I just don't run enough. Maybe I should run a little more. No, that's not the problem. The problem is that you're running and strength training would have fixed that, right? And so strength training produces, helps us produce more force. That's sim- st- simple and straightforward, right? And you talk to somebody else and they're like, well, you know, I'm, I strength train. I go to the, uh, the hospital gym and I get on, you know, the machines and I work through. There's like 17 machines I work through and I just do all those. And to that, I'll turn it over to you for a second. You would say, like, what's the, what's the difference between what they're doing and what we want them to do? Well, we, we use barbells and we can, uh, we can use a few very simple motions the squat, the press, the bench press, and the deadlift. We'll talk about that very soon. Um, and almost infinitely scale those, and you can make improvement with the barbell motions train in training strength for an indefinite period of time. And it doesn't take very long for a man, in particular, to go to you know some ex, you know fill in the blank Nautilus machine and train for five or six weeks on that thing and use all of the plates in the stack on that machine, and there's nowhere to go. So we we like these barbell movements to train the strength because it's economical, it's infinitely scalable, and it's so darn simple. But I wanted I wanted to, I wanted to say some more about these attributes, these yeah. athletic attributes. Um, you know, there are there are uh, how many are there? Like there's like ten athletic attributes. There's ten 12, that have been defined. Sure, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. So right? they so might be um, flexibility. Uh, yep. explosiveness, strength, yep. uh, accuracy, yep. balance, balance, power, speed, did we say speed, agility, all those sort of things, right? Cardiovascular endurance. And in the untrained person, strength will improve every single one of those things without spending any time whatsoever in specifically trying to improve those things. So, you know, if you want to be faster and you don't barbell train, if I, if I train you with the barbell, for four weeks, you will find that you are faster. You will find that you are more flexible. You will find that you uh, your archery is improved because stronger people interact with the world around them better than non-strong people do. So it helps us with all these athletic pursuits. And, and life is an athletic pursuit. Like you said, That's we have right. to interact with the world around us. So it works in terms of athletics, but it's also the most effective in terms of aesthetics too. Mm, super important. You know, people, people come to me and they say, Oh, you know, my metabolism is really slowed down. No, it, it didn't like your body still uses uh, glucose and metabolizes, you know, uh, food stuffs at the same rate. Sure. But, but you don't have as much muscle. So when you're resting and when you're doing work, you don't require as many calories as you once did. You don't require as many nutrients. So your basal, you know, calorie requirement has gone down. The problem is your muscle mass. Your muscle mass is dying. So when we strength train, we put more of that muscle mass on and the muscle mass consumes calories. Even when we're asleep, it makes it easier for us to lose weight. As a result, muscles, secrete myokines, all kinds of hormones. The muscle is a hormone. You can ask our friend, Dr. Sullivan, and read in his book, The Barbell Prescription, about this. And improves insulin sensitivity. And make just, just having the muscle makes your body work better. And yep. it, when you look at older people, and especially if you do what we do, you realize, you realize that one of the main things that makes them present as old isn't just the skin quality stuff. It's that they shuffle their feet, their muscle mass is gone or it's dying, and uh, they can't interact with the world like they once did. So the strength helps that. It makes us look yep. better. You know, skinny fat ain't good. Nope. And and for our few female listeners that are listening, they're going, well, like, but I don't want to get bigger. I don't think I want to put on muscle. I don't want to get bulky. We hear that all the time. Yeah. You know, 
you can't. You can't get bulky. You can't. You can't get so muscular that that you're like, oh my god, I'm 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 I've got too much muscle. You you don't have the hormonal milieu to do that in your body. And so what will often happen is a a female will look at another female and say like, I want to look like her. And we get this all the time, especially with our female coaches at at Barbell Logic. Is so like, I want to look like her. Like well, all she does is squat and deadlift and bench press and press and do chin ups. I mean, that's like her whole workout, you know, like what you're like, no, yeah, that's. And so they, they think that it's going to make everybody bigger and it's, it's not, it's going to put quality muscle mass on you. But often that quality muscle mass comes in the form of more dense muscles. And that musculature will, will begin to utilize the fat stores in your body. And so the fat will go start to go away as the muscle builds and you end up with a, a tremendously better aesthetic look. Yeah. The the internet calls that recomposition. Yeah. Recomposition. So your body may weight may not change very much, but the way that's all stacked on your skeleton sure does and people that's, look a lot better. And and we train people for strength and not aesthetics. So, you know, we're not trying to do bodybuilding. We want you to be really strong in a yeah, very not, short not time. Yeah, not just aesthetics, right? And so yep. one of the things I think about is that people come in and they don't understand, right? So one of the things we want to do with this this podcast series is help people who are like, well, I'm not sure that I understand that I need strength first or even further that I even need performance. You know, I, we had, I've had this talk hundreds of times with clients who say like, okay, that sounds great about this performance thing, but like I'm not really, I just feel really good crappy and and a lot of that is because of how I feel like I look and what we're trying to tell you is is that strength will give you the best bang for your buck on those things too so one it's it will make your aesthetics significantly better you'll see aesthetic improvement we just don't train purely for aesthetic improvement what we're really training for when we talk about performance is we're training for improved quality of life your quality of life is better I don't know how often somebody runs three or four miles every morning before work and says, my quality of life is dramatically improved because I run three or four miles every day before work. Listen, there's some crazy... I have nothing you know, generous to say about that. No, I mean, it's <laughs> tough, right? But but almost everybody that trains the way we want them to train for strength eventually falls in love with that strength training and certainly falls in love with the benefits that they get because of that strength training. And so the quality of life improvement is tremendous uh, we often call that here, we call it voluntary hardship. And it, it's hard to preach that lesson on, on episode one of this series because having if you have not gone through it, you cannot understand. But, but strength training, general strength training, is a thing that we choose to do that is hard. It's voluntarily hard. And those things that we choose that are voluntary hard, voluntarily hard make us better and refine us and make us better people. And so People come to me on the first day, they can't understand that. They, they're going to have to trust me on some level to say, strength will give you the biggest bang for your buck. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you interact with the world better. It's going to make your life, quality of life better and your aesthetics better. And then once they start down that path of strength training, they recognize like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm not just getting better physically. I'm getting better emotionally, mentally. Like the thing it, it buys them that no one ever talks about is it, it buys you confidence. Don't you think like so many people are coming to start this process and it's because of a lack of confidence somewhere or in something, like whether it's the way they perform or the way they feel or the quality of life or their looks or a combination of all those sort of things. And I think for us, it's not the only thing that's a voluntary hardship that makes us better, but it's certainly probably the most general thing that works for just about everybody. Yeah, and especially, especially when you take into account the fact that it's safe. You know, somebody might do some rock climbing, or you know, there might be other things that they might do to try to get those, get that, you know, build their confidence and uh, and build skills. But uh, there's nothing quite so safe as as what we do here. Yeah, uh, and and it is hard, but because it's hard, it works, and you'll be stronger, and you'll look better for it. Uh, a lot of people are scared of pursuing strength because they hurt Matt, my knee, yeah, my back. And we believe this is medicine too. You know, getting stronger is medicine. If your back hurts, chances are it's because it's not terribly strong. 
Uh, almost everybody that's over 30 has some sort of pathology you can see on an x-ray or an MRI in their back. But we know that when they squat and deadlift properly and get stronger, that that back pain subsides over time. And um, our, our very, you know, we have a great deal of experience with that, but our knowledgeable friends like Dr. Darren Deaton and Will Morris and other you know people that work in this physical therapy area, they tell us that, particularly De- Deaton tells us that motion is lotion. You know, using those knees and using that back makes those things feel better, and strengthening their back, strengthening people's backs, uh, protects them against future injury. And I have never had a client who came to me with back pain who did not feel better after four weeks of deadlifting. Sure. So the strength that we use, that we train with the barbell helps with those injuries and helps with those aches yeah. and pains. Yeah, it's kind of opposite what conventional wisdom is, right? Like, it's, which is interesting. Conventional Take it wisdom, easy, man. Take it easy. Yeah, conventional wisdom, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it, how often conventional wisdom is wrong? And it, it often makes me wonder in what, in what industries and genres do I believe in correctly because I believe the general – the conventional wisdom about I, things. I have a pill I want you to take. You do? You'll see. Yeah. What color is it? <laughs> it's red. Is it? Yeah. And then you'll see it all. <laughs> so you'll hear you'll hear a lot of I'll say poorly educated people and often poorly educated people who are actually in the therapy field, chiropractors, physical therapists, whatever, not all of them, right? And they'll say, Well, you you can't do this. You can't strength train. You'll hurt your back. And everybody says, oh, you know what? You know what? I will hurt my back if I strength train. And then if you can just talk to somebody, you know, the name of this podcast is Barbell Logic because we try to take a logical view, a very systematic and reasonable view of things and say, well, wait a minute. If you've done, if you've done nothing on your back for two months, six months, a year, two years, your back is weaker, not stronger And everybody would say, that's true. And you go, well, how does that make your back more resilient to injury? And it doesn't. It's protecting your back as if it's a porcelain dish that I don't want to drop. But instead of I say, like, look, there are ways to take that porcelain dish and wrap it in whatever, newspaper and rubber and duct tape and put it in styrofoam and boxes and I can kick the shit out of that box down the road and the porcelain dish isn't going to break. People are like, oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's what we're doing with strength training. You make the muscles around the back strong. You force the back to get strong. And when you force the back to get strong very carefully with absolutely perfect form, starting conservative and working up slowly, the back gets stronger. When the back gets stronger, it gets more resilient to injury, right? Like less vulnerable. And not just the back, the knees are the same, the hips are the same, the shoulder is the same. And so we see a tremendous reduced injury rate for people who strength train. It's simple as that. Yep. We use strength training for everything. Yeah. We we use it to help the new client improve their mobility. We use it to help the new client uh, strengthen and protect their back and their knees. We use it to uh, help them run faster, hit harder on the football field or uh, get up off of the toilet if they're elderly. We use it right. for everything, and it works. Play with In the grandkids. untrained person, it works every single time. Yep. So yeah. here's here's something I do to people, Matt. Yes. And I upset people with it sometimes. Excellent. I'm excited to hear it. So if you've got a friend that you think should do this and they've been reluctant to do it, go get a, just a kitchen chair, kitchen, you know, just a regular old table or straight back chair that comes with your kitchen table. Yep. And have them sit in that chair, have them kind of scoot out to the front edge of it. I'm doing it right now. See? Yep. And have them move their their uh, toe, their feet out about shoulder width apart, turn their toes out, and have them kind of lean forward so that their chest is over their, over their foot. And then without using their hands, they can't use their hands, they have to just stand up out of that chair. Just push with their feet and stand up out of that chair. And almost every single person that doesn't barbell train is shocked at how hard it is for them to get up without their hands. Yeah. And by shocked at how hard it is, you mean impossible. Up there there will be a lot of people that can't do it. Literally can't do it. It's literally impossible for many. There will be a lot of people over 50 that can't do it. There will be a lot of people that are a little heavier than they would like to be that can't do it. And 
there are a lot of people that think they're pretty darn fit and maybe the guy that's running around the block will find out that it's a lot harder for him to get up from that chair without his hands than he thought. And, and when they do this, don't let them rock back and forth. They've just got to push with their foot and just get up out of the chair. No hands. They can't pull on the table. They can't put their hand on their thigh. They just have to use their feet to shove themselves up into the upright position. And they're going to find out that they're not that strong. Yep. Well, I can take a guy or a lady from that state, wherever they are, and add conservatively add 100 pounds to any, in anybody's squat like that. Sure. We, in a short period of time. In a very short period of time. And when we do that, everything gets better. Carrying the groceries in, tying the shoes, appearance, knee pain. Yep. yep. It all gets better. Yep. That's why we do it. I I'm not a meathead. Nope. I didn't come out of gym culture. Never played football. Don't care. But I fell in love with this because it worked. Better than anything else, more economical than anything else. Oh, I've think, done it all. Yeah, greater return on investment <laughs> than anything else. And so for us, as as if you can get an enormous benefit for a, a short amount of time of effort and work, and I, I want to be clear, strength training has to be hard. It's not easy. We've distinguished this in, in earlier episodes we've done on the podcast that Correct strength training is almost always simple, but it has to be hard in order to be effective. That's it. It's just simple and hard. And so you have to be willing to take a step towards like actually doing something hard. This, those of us who are middle aged and older can remember all of the infomercials that would come on when we were kids and in our younger life about the, it, there it was all about convenience and easy. But everybody knew that the thing that you folded up and put under your bed wasn't actually going to fix you. Right, like you fold it up and put it under your bed, so you forget about it. You forget that you're still making that thirty nine dollar a month payment on that thing. That's what it's there for. What we're saying is, it's got to be hard, and it's going to be simple, but it's going to be the best thing you ever did, and it's going to change your life. And very rarely does someone buy into this and really give it the effort that it deserves, and decide that it wasn't worth it. They always decide it was worth it, and they usually become some of the biggest proselytizers, biggest evangelizers of this thing. And so if Number one, if that's you and you're listening to the show and you don't, you can't stand up out of the chair, it's time to strength train. And and two, if you've, if you're listening to this podcast because a family member or coworker or loved one or somebody that's a friend has shared it with you, it's you probably know like man, they talk about their strength training all the time. They talk about they seem like different people. They carry themselves better. It's not an arrogance. It's a confidence that you wish you had. That's. That's all it is. It's not the be all end all. There are more important things in life than strength, I think, right? My relationship with my wife and kids are more important than my squat, but my squat's up there. Getting strong makes me a better husband, a better father, a better a better worker, a better boss, a better citizen. And it makes me better mentally and emotionally just as much as it does physically as well. So that's why we love strength training. So it's time. Go train your strength. We start small. It may be with that body weight squat out of that kitchen chair. Yep. It might even be something less than that. And we have ways of helping people unload, you know, below their body weight squat. Or it might be my 15 pound bar, or it might be the 45 pound bar. But then we build from there. And within just a few weeks, uh, you transform yourself. Yep. And uh, we don't do it. The coach doesn't do it. You do it. And uh, nobody is transformed by the elliptical machine, Jim. <laughs> Matt. No, no. You know, nope. he just really carries himself different. You know, something's changed with Steve. Like Steve, what is it? He's like that elliptical machine. <laughs> never, ever, never. It's never happened, right? No. no, if you can read a magazine while doing the thing. You know, his posture sure has gotten better. Tell us your secret, Steve. <laughs> An elliptical machine. No, never. No, it's strength, and it's always strength for us. I've tried it all. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars to get what this got me, chasing red herrings and uh, wasting time. And when I found that this worked, I was all in, and I hope you guys yeah. are too. Send this to a friend that you want to do this stuff. And so if you are the friend that has gotten this from uh, one of your acquaintances, know that they sent it to you because they care and that they have uh, felt these good effects themselves, and they just want to share that. Yeah. Uh, 
people tend so to be get the... evangelical about this. That's right. Because it's real, and it works, yeah. and not a lot of things do nowadays. That's right. So when people find something that's real and works, they're shocked, and they're in love, because it's capital T true, and we don't see it very much anymore. Mm. Yeah, that's good. So this is the first episode of a, about a 10-part series, so if you've listened to this, we've got nine more coming at you that'll walk you through everything you need to know to get started strength training. Uh, and it's important for us to tell that to our to our audience, to the family members and friends and coworkers of, of our people who have listened to us for the last couple of years. And uh, so, yeah, stand up out of that chair this week and see, see how it works for you. And yeah, uh, uh, if it's a struggle, it's time to strength train. Yeah, uh, film that, by the way. Yeah. Film that, and then if you if you're really if you're really ballsy, tag at Barbell Logic on Instagram in the video of that, and then let's check back in together in six weeks. We'll help you. Yeah, if you guys yeah. want some more information about how you might do this, uh, the friend that referred you to this show, ask them. They can probably help. And if if they need more help, or you need more help than that, or you found this just uh, through iTunes or some other outlet, you can ask us. We can You can go to barbelllogic.com. You can sign up for the Friday Fives, where we uh, send you all kinds of uh, instructional material and more information about this thing that we love so much and think is so effective. We also, uh, we also have a YouTube channel with how-to videos, since they can help you get started on your own. And when you get to the point where you need help, and we all do, you can go to barbelllogic.com and sign up for some online coaching. And somebody like me or Matt uh, will watch every single movement that you make, critique that, teach you how to do it right, help you stay on the path, do your programming, and uh, make your time in the gym spent the most efficiently as possible. Anything else, Uncle Matt? No, it's great. It's fantastic. Thank you guys so much for listening to this. If you're an, a long-time listener, you've probably heard all this before, but it's easy to forget, you know? It's easy to forget yep. what, brought it to, what, what brought us to it. Um, I recently did a four-week layoff. I had a little minor surgery and laid off, and uh, my lower back started waking me up in week three. Mm. I hadn't had that in years. No, isn't it bizarre? It, yeah, it's, it was upsetting. I was like, oh, no. Yep. Got right back to lifting heavy, and your back pain went away. Yep. Yeah, it's it took amazing. me. It took me three sessions. It took me three sure. squat sessions to get that that lower back twinge to go away. Yep. Uh, but and not particularly heavy either. I squatted two twenty five this morning and yeah. session number just three, and it was just fine. It. Yeah, yeah. So, we don't care where you start. I want to be clear too. Like a lot of people think they've got to sort of clean themselves up to get strength training. Well, I got to get in better shape to strength train. Nope. There is nothing embarrassing about where you're starting. If you cannot stand up out of that chair, we would love to hear from you. We want to help you. Your friend wants to help you. Your family member wants to help you. That's because it matters. So we, we don't care where you start. We we care where you end, right? Yeah, we want to end a, well. I have a close friend who we were talking about this at, I think, at Thanksgiving dinner one year. And I was like, hey, man, you know, this guy's an active guy, does a lot of stuff, lots of chores, do it yourself or kind of guy, you know, pretty strapping looking guy. And I said, hey, man, just, just try this. And I had him do the chair test. And he's like, oh, no. That was Thursday. He came by, He came with us on Saturday and has trained four times a week since. Right, for the last several years. <laughs> yeah, because it's, gotten strong. it's, it's shocking yeah. how how uh, how weak we are. Yeah. Well, there's enough of that. Thank you guys so much for listening. Send this to a friend. Send them a link. Um, text it to them. They can listen. They text it right to their phone because that's where they're going to listen to it anyway. That's right. And let's see if we can get, get our friends and loved ones a little stronger than they were yesterday. Thank you, guys. Ain't nothing but a peanut.